Hello everyone, my name is Agral Kumar and today I'll be talking about data-driven offline optimization for architecting hardware accelerators. This is joint work with Amir, Milad, Kevin and Sergey. Okay, so our overall goal in this work is to produce optimized hardware accelerators that are specialized towards running a given set of neural network applications. For example, we might want to produce an accelerator that can quickly run a mobile net model. Specialization of accelerators towards particular applications has already shown benefits, and our goal in this work is to be able to devise a method that can automatically do accelerator design. Now, there are several important challenges that need to be handled here. First of all, we need to be able to find good designs, which are in an absolute sense very few in number, navigating in a sea of infeasible designs as you see in the figure. Second, we need to be able to respect all sorts of design constraints such as chip area or chip power constraints that the designer imposes, and these are hard constraints, we cannot violate them at all. And finally, we want to make sure that whatever method we come up with attains a favorable scaling as more applications are added or as constraints change. In particular, we want our method to take less time in terms of producing a good accelerator, and also we want to make sure that our method can reuse data or reuse knowledge whenever constraints or applications change. We'll present a method that enjoys both of these benefits. Okay, so let's, let's get started. So a typical accelerator design or accelerator optimization pipeline is simulator driven in that a user typically first of all devises a cycle accurate simulator and this already takes a lot of time to design. Then the user runs uh, time consuming simulator, uh, simulations in the simulator and uses the resulting output of the simulator to, uh, to optimize the accelerator using a black box optimization method. In this work, we however take a different approach. We take a data driven approach in which we first of all uh, uh, obtain a one time collected data set of accelerators which could come from past experiments or just running random uh, designs under the simulator uh, or even interacting with a low fidelity simulator which is not super accurate. And these designs are accelerators annotated with the corresponding performance metrics such as latency or power or whatever we want to optimize. And then we'll distill this data set into a learned model and then run optimization against this learned model instead of interacting with the simulator. So this is pure, purely offline or data driven approach because we're not interacting with the simulator at all. And, and this, this kind of a approach, and we'll discuss each of these components, and this kind of an approach that we'll discuss in this work actually allows us to attain all of the, uh, the desired requirements and, and overcome all the challenges that we discussed on the previous slide. So first of all, uh, why is data driven optimization even preferred? So I'll go into our method, but why is this even uh, a good choice? So it turns out one of the major benefits of data driven optimization is that uh, it, it is way, way faster as compared to an online method. So while interacting with the simulator and running evolutionary or black box optimization takes 10 to 11 days on our, on our accelerator design problems, uh, optimizing this, this, uh, this uh, data driven approach, which is, which is noted as prime in the plots that you see, it takes only 10 to 11 hours. So there's a huge gap between, uh, between the amount of simulation time that is taken by online methods and offline methods. And this gap increases as you provide more applications to the, to the uh, as, you, as you have more applications that you want to optimize accelerators for. And finally, when you train a neural network model, which, which our method uh, does, because it takes this data set and, and trains a learned surrogate with which, uh, against which it optimizes the accelerator, such neural network models can generalize even if you provide them with not so good data, even if you provide them with bad data, infeasible data points, etc. And this basically amortizes the cost of, of like any sort of data, obtaining any sort of data in the first place. So basically, if you have to run many, many accelerator design experiments, a data driven method would be much more data efficient compared to an online approach. Okay, so now let's first of all formulate, uh, formulate uh, our optimization problem, and then let's see what our method exactly does. So we denote the accelerator as X, and this is K components, X1 to XK. These components correspond to microarchitectural parameters in our case, and, the, and these, each of these parameters, which you can see on the slide, take discrete values as you see. And this is not a requirement of our method, we just chose this parameterization because this was available to us. Now, our objective is to be able to minimize a function f of x, which in our experiments would be the latency, although you can just change it to be any other performance metric you care about, while keeping sure that the area of the accelerator, so area of x is, is, is bounded by some threshold that you provide, and by, while making sure that the accelerator that is produced by our method is feasible, in the sense that it does not uh, produce compiler errors or, or timeouts when you actually evaluate it. So you don't have access to evaluating it, but, you, but eventually you want to make sure that the design you find does not have these errors. And we want to be able to solve this optimization but given access to only a data set of feasible and infeasible designs. The feasible accelerators are annotated with the corresponding latency metric, which is yi, 
for a given accelerator xi and the infeasible accelerators are just you you have a set of them you you don't have any uh, latency values for it because they're infeasible but you just don't you just know that these are infeasible designs okay so how do we solve this data driven optimization problem so a naive approach here uh, which is the first approach that comes to mind is that what you could do is you could train a surrogate of the op optimization objective so in this case the latency and then optimize the accelerator against this learned model so you train a neural network model that can predict latency for a given accelerator and you optimize against it however this approach suffers from what we call the overestimation issue in that when you optimize a learned model uh, the, the, the optimizer would inevitably find designs where the predicted value of the objective so so sort of, for example the predicted latency should would appear much more promising than what, what it should so basically what will happen is that the model that the optimizer would think that under the learned model a particular accelerator design is very promising for example it attains low latency but it actually isn't attaining low latency under the under the actual simulator so this is happening because your learned model is inaccurate on certain points and your optimizer gets fooled into finding exactly these points on which your uh, on which your learned model is inaccurate and so as you see on this in this scatter plot on the slide uh, it turns out that most of the accelerators formed by this method uh, they they have a much larger actual latency as compared to their predicted latency meaning that the the, the, the train model thinks that they are actually quite good but they aren't actually that good when you actually evaluate them under the simulator so what our approach does here is that it essentially uh, it trains a conservative surrogate model that makes sure that the this fooling of the optimizer does not happen on these on these points that you find during optimization and this is how i'll disc uh, and i uh, on the next slide i'll discuss how we exactly do this so our method prime uh, to achieve this to, to make sure that it uh, it does that, that the optimizer doesn't get fooled it uses three loss terms and i'll go over them one by one the first loss term is that it trains the the surrogate model which is denoted as f theta x in this in this in this figure it trains it to first of all predict the latencies on the data set uh, which has the latency annotation so on the feasible part of the data set then secondly it additionally has a loss term that pushes up the latency predictions for invalid designs or infeasible designs that you were also given because remember we had an infeasible data set given to us and finally it runs this uh, this uh, procedure to find these examples so these adversarial examples that would fool the optimizer so basically uh, the the problem that we saw on the previous slide this fooling problem it it actively mines for such examples that would fool the optimizer and pushes up their latency value so that when you run optimization when you are going to minimize latency you don't find such adversarial examples at the end of training so that's what this adversarial negative mining step does it finds these adversarial examples and pushes their latency value up this, this this is also inspired from previous work that I would encourage you to check out. Okay, so how does our method perform? So first of all, we'll present some results which show uh, the performance of Prime in accelerating single applications. So in this case, we are given a particular application and some some data which corresponds to certain accelerators, comma their latency values for this application. We want to figure out uh, if we can design a better accelerator uh, using this data set for this given application. So we considered nine different applications in our case, and uh, as you see uh, in, the, in this table in the in, in the last row, turns out that Prime basically outperforms or is comparable to uh, various other online simulator-driven methods that were pretty much the state of the art on these problems. So we have we actually had tuned these online methods on this problem. And now you might wonder why this is actually the case because Prime only has access to the offline data set and no online interactions. And uh, the, the reason here is that in the amount of data budget that is given to Prime and to the evolutionary or online methods, Prime is much more data efficient in the sense that if you give uh, if you give these online methods many more days to query the simulator and find a better design, they'll they'll find one. But here in this case, we control for the amount of data that is seen by Prime and equivalently the number of uh, online queries that the online optimization methods can make and find that Prime is much more data efficient. Next, we move on to accelerating multiple applications. So in this case, our task is to be able to optimize uh, and, and find a single accelerator design that can accelerate many po possible applications simultaneously. So it should be good in accelerating many possible applications given to us. And to be able to, uh, to, to, to make sure this is possible, what we do is we modify Prime to train a contextual model where instead of just taking an accelerator and predicting its latency, Prime now basically takes a context vector that also identifies what application is uh, what uh, what is the identity of the application for which we want the neural network to predict the latency, and these and this and in this contextual model is trained on contexts which are created out of very simple high-level features such as 
number of feed forward layers or convolutional layers, etc., in the target application that we care about. So these are just features of the target application. And we train a contextual model. Now when we optimize this contextual model for a given set of applications together, which you see on this in this table, the, the first, the, the leftmost column. Again, it turns out that uh, that prime is much better than evolutionary or model-based optimization algorithms, which actually interact with the simulator. In fact, turns out that there is much larger improvement when you have more applications in your training pool. So it's much more efficient in terms of, of like actually scaling better with more applications. And you can reuse the same training data for all the applications. You don't need to retrain uh, any prime, uh, any, uh, retrain prime again in this case. Finally, we also applied uh, Prime towards accelerating uh, new applications that were not seen. So what if you have some new applications that were suddenly added to your application pool and you've not seen any training data from these applications? Turns out that the same contextual model that I described on the previous slide can actually accelerate these new applications as well. So in, in this table that you see, we train Prime on only a subset of the applications, which is shown in the train applications column. And we, when, and we evaluated the performance of Prime in accelerating unseen test applications, so the test applications column. And again, it turns out that even if you uh, provide evolutionary algorithms with training data from these test domains, even then Prime outperforms these evolutionary algorithms without seeing any training data from these test domains at all. And this is basically the example of effective data reuse because there's no unseen uh, there's no data from these test applications and it still uh, outperforms evolutionary methods which have to retrain every time from scratch or as soon as these applications change. And there are many other results in the paper with other data flows and comparison to human accelerator, human designed accelerators and so on, which I'll skip in the interest of time here. Okay, so to summarize, Prime is a simple and effective offline data-driven approach for optimizing hardware accelerators that works across many different applications, both individually and jointly, and can also optimize accelerators for unseen applications in a zero-shot fashion. We invite you to try Prime on your uh, accelerator optimization task, as well as please check out our paper and a previous blog post we had about this general area of offline model-based optimization for more details. Thanks a lot for listening.